Well, hello, YouTube Power Hour Squad. Erica here for a brand new interview for you. So this week, I got to chat with world champion, Olympic gold and silver medalist, Sean Johnson. She is a very, very accomplished gymnast who now has a very successful YouTube channel. So this is a really excited, exciting interview. I remember watching Sean on the Olympics, and it's really, really neat to hear how she transitioned from a sports celebrity to now a YouTube celebrity. And so if you are a fan of Sean and her channel, you're going to absolutely love this interview to really that transition of being a celebrity and now a YouTuber. So if you're new here, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell because I have new interviews for you every single week. And on this channel, I interview well-known female YouTube creators to inspire you to start your YouTube channels or grow the one that you already have. Enjoy the interview. Mwah. Well, hello, Sean. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yes. I mean, it's an honor to talk to you because you are a cele celebrity in your own right uh, by being an Olympic medalist. And so it's incredible to have you on and to talk about specifically your YouTube channel. So that's what you're here to do is to talk about your YouTube. And I'm really excited to dive into this idea of kind of translating your fame as a as a gymnast and now onto YouTube. So before we dive into that, why don't you start with what inspired you to kind of pivot your career and get onto YouTube? Um, okay, it's long story short. <laughs> Um, I worked in sports entertainment with after the Olympics um, for about 10 years. And within sports entertainment, I got so used to being a brand ambassador and working as a partner with all these different Fortune 500 companies. But it was the same kind of story over and over again. They would tell me, you know, what I could wear and what I could say. And here's my talking points. Mm -hmm. And they would edit these fluff pieces on NBC and everybody kind of told this story of who I was from their perspective and none of it was ever bad, but it was, it was their story to tell instead of mine, even though it was kind of like my career and my journey that I kind of went through. And then it was a similar situation with my husband when we ended up meeting, he was an NFL um, athlete and people kind of shared his story for him. Every time we would walk down the street, they'd be like, Oh, you're an NFL wife. You're so lucky. Or, Oh, you play in the NFL. You're so lucky. And this is like the greatest thing ever. And they never heard our story from our perspective. And so we watched YouTube. We've been followers on YouTube for forever. And we kind of just thought, what if we took our story in our, in our own hands and started sharing with the world the actual like reality of our situation and keep it unedited and keep it pretty raw just to show what, you know, the world hasn't seen yet. And it's definitely been a learning, um, it's a major learning curve. Uh, but it's been a really fun process and something we've loved doing together. So uh, when was it that you started your channel? What year was it? We started in 2015. Okay. So you've been on for almost about five years on YouTube. Yes. And at the time... A long time. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, whoa. Uh, at the time, it was just your channel, right? It was the Sean Johnson um, channel? It was, but my husband was running it. Mm, so Okay. So it was a joint effort. He's the one who started it. He has, he oh. has his MBA and he, he learned all the analytics of YouTube and was fascinated by that. Mm -hmm. He actually um, had some friends of his who worked on the analytical side of YouTube who kind of like showed him the ropes. Mm -hmm. So he ran it, but I was just kind of the face at the beginning. Ah, oh, so it was a, it wasn't just like your project. Like, oh, I want to do this YouTube. Like it was, you guys decided as a couple, we're going to get onto YouTube. And at the time when you went on, it sounds like what you said, you wanted to be able to be basically raw, uncut, unedited, ver you know, showing your life the way that you really live. Nobody else taking that story for their own. Were you at the time, was it a serious thing? Were you, when you got on, were you like, you know what? You know, was Andrew like, we're going to upload this many times a week. We're going to do content. Or was it like, oh, I'm, you know, here and there, I'm going to kind of upload. Um, we had no idea what we were doing from day one. So <laughs> okay. we had no set schedule. We didn't know that there should be a rhythm to it or how the process should work. And 
we were both balancing kind of still being in that 50 50 limbo stage of working in sports entertainment mm -hmm. where we had all these contracts and we had all these ambassadorships where we had to make sure, you know, we wore Nike in our YouTube videos and mm -hmm. we still mm -hmm. abided by those contracts and those laws of what people were kind of controlling us around. Um, so we were kind of just dabbling in it for probably the first two, two years mm -hmm. before we ever took it seriously. And what happened in that moment in two years into your channel where you guys decided to actually, like you said, take it seriously? Um, we kind of just got fed up with doing the balancing act of, of trying to please a, a completely different career and then trying to succeed in the YouTube world. Mm -hmm. And then we ended up moving to LA for sports entertainment, for TV hosting gigs and just kind of our, our old careers. Um, and ended up befriending this entire group of YouTubers and influencers. And a lot of them were from like our hometowns and Midwest and had these incredible careers. One mm -hmm. was, a Yale mathematician who's now super successful on YouTube and one was a professional athlete and one was a singer and we just learned all the different ways and intricacies and stories that YouTube has allowed people to kind of share and we at, in that moment we were just like okay we're gonna like ditch everything else and just try to do this as you know our career and our storytelling and we, we really loved it. So what what did that mean for you to go all in? So you said, you know, ditch everything else. So were you, other than like the sponsorships, were you doing any other type of work, uh, you know, in, in sports or entertainment? Um, we did a lot of other work. And we still dabbled in it a little bit, but we kind of made YouTube our full time. So we did a lot of like, um, back then, we worked in venture capital. I was still working on TV. Mm -hmm. I was working as a motivational speaker. My husband was still bouncing around the NFL. Um, I was working as a commentator for gymnastics. So it was a lot of different things. But instead of taking those sports entertainment roles and signing those contracts to be ambassadors, we were foregoing those to focus on YouTube and make sure we had a posting schedule and worked with a lot of um, really good YouTubers to learn the collabing world and learn how to actually make it a mainstream media thing instead of just a side hobby. Yeah. So how, do you remember how many subscribers you were at, at that point when you decided to take it seriously? Like 50,000. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So it was still, so even though you had a pretty big name in the sports world, it, it didn't really translate to subscribers on YouTube. No, not at all. I remember that was the most humbling part for us. It, it seemed like such an easy transition, mm -hmm. um, naively, um, because on Instagram, we had over a million followers on both channels mm -hmm. and we just had a following already because mm -hmm. of our careers. And when we opened the YouTube world, we figured everyone would just be like, oh, sure, we'll go follow you there. Yeah. And when nobody did, we were like, uh oh, <laughs> are we doing something wrong? Um, but we just learned YouTube is its whole, uh, it's like a whole other animal and it's its own world yeah. and it's its own business. And that's why I think we dabbled in it for two years and didn't really take it seriously because we didn't really know how to operate it. And then when we finally decided to convert and kind of move over, and take it seriously and learn, we learned that the whole system is different and you have to do things differently. Yes. So I want to know, because, you know, our viewers and listeners are all YouTubers or want to be yeah. YouTubers. So what did you do at that point? At, you know, two years into it, you're like, hey, no one's following us, yeah. you know, 50,000 subscribers. And, um, you know, what did you guys then do differently to um, say, take it seriously? Yes. So one, we had everyone telling us that we needed to collab and mm. collab was like by doing collabs, that was the best way for us to grow. I think within a couple months, we grew to like 350,000 subscribers by just doing collaborations. And we were in a very unique situation where because of our outside careers, yeah. because of the NFL and the Olympics, it made collabs easy mm -hmm. because kind of had those hat tricks of like, oh, do you want to do a collab? I can flip in it. Andrew can, you know, do his NFL thing, do his football thing, and we can make something fun work. So we had that really interesting um, aspect of our names to use, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. And then once we started getting a little bit momenta of momentum, we learned that you have to feed into the trends. And we weren't sure what our voice was on YouTube at the time. We weren't sure what story we wanted to tell, if we wanted to be vloggers or whatever, whatever mm -hmm. our, our, our thing was. And so I'd say for a good year or two, we just 
we ran with the trends. We made slime. We, you mm-hmm. know, did all the dances. We did all of like the trending things to just kind of build our audience. And it was through that we learned um, kind of about our voice and where, what direction we wanted to go in. So what, okay, I want to dive into those a little bit. So who did you collab with that, that you felt really bumped you guys up? Um, well, we had this really interesting um, connection with the Bertaley family. Mm-hmm. Um, Annie LeBlanc is and her little sister Haley are gymnasts. Mm-hmm. And I had met them long before YouTube, just at gymnastics competitions that want gymnastics competitions that I would host on my own. And I kind of knew of them anyways. And they kind of became like family to us outside of YouTube. Mm-hmm. And those those girls were always like my little sisters. And they're the ones that really convinced us to take a step in the YouTube direction and kind of teach us the ropes. And mm-hmm. it was with them that they're like, okay, let's do a couple collabs. We'll show you how it works. Mm-hmm. And they kind of gave us that launching pad. And then after that, um, we had this, we always laughed. It was kind of like this Midwest clan of YouTubers that lived in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And it was Rebecca Zamolo and um, Madeline Bailey and just a lot of like fun YouTubers that we did a lot of collabs with. But they were also just our closest friends in LA. Yeah, that's very cool. So how big were they on YouTube? Uh, Massive. Okay. (laughs) They had millions of subscribers. Yeah. Okay. So that's really helpful. So what did those collabs look like? You, they filmed things and you went on to their channel or what did they look like? Um, so all of, a lot of the collabs that we did really early on, we made sure they were really authentic to our brand. So mm-hmm. a lot of it was gymnastics. Um, mm-hmm. So Rebecca Zamolo was actually a former gymnast herself and a very high level gymnast. And a lot of her content centered around gymnastics. Mm-hmm. So her and I would go into a gym and we would do like challenges together and we would do one challenge that would live on my channel and another challenge that would live on hers and we would cross promote and cross push. Um, with Madeline Bailey, we did just like fun challenges. It was her and her husband versus me and my husband. Mm. And it was, um, we did like chubby bunny and, um, what are some of the others? Just like funny games. Okay. Just to kind of, again, show a different side of us Mm -hmm. that professional athletics would never show. They always try to make it so serious. You don't get to see the human side of an elite athlete. So showing that with other people was always fun. And we would do the same thing. We would each film a challenge and then cross promote on channels. Um, And then with the LeBlancs and Bertale family, we did a lot of gymnastics just because the girls were gymnasts. Mm -hmm. Uh, Another one that we did was Jojo Siwa. She was actually Mm. a good friend of mine. I've babysat her before. Oh, wow. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Back when she was really little and we both lived in the same area. We've known each other forever and I love her like a little sister. So we did some fun collabs just on her channel. And um, another one was also uh, Maddie Ziegler and Kenzie Ziegler. Again, friends of mine that I knew from the Midwest when they were really little girls and they were in gymnastics and dance. And it was just kind of reaching out to people that we trusted and we, we respected and mm-hmm. um, just kind of got to play around with. Yeah, so they featured you on their channels and like, oh yeah, you know, they have their own channel. Go check it out and subscribe. And then yeah. that brought, like you said, that took you from 50K to about 350K subscribers. Yeah, I'd say over the course of um, probably a year, six Mm -hmm. months to a year, we grew to about the half a million subscriber Mm -hmm. um, range. Mm -hmm. And then, and then for us, um, how we ended up getting into the path that we are now with our content, it kind of happened just super organically. My husband and I got married. Um, We kind of showed our whole wedding series on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And then it was a year after we got married, we actually found out we were pregnant, which was incredible. Mm -hmm. And we had a miscarriage. Mm -hmm. And it was, um, we decided very vulnerably to share that story, Mm -hmm. not knowing how it would go. We had never shown anything that vulnerable or that raw before. And we never planned to. Um, But I wanted to show it because I felt like it was a good way for me to heal to kind of use that community that we had built to see if they had any advice Mm -hmm. as how to get through it. And that kind of gave us a traction into a path that we had never seen before. Um, The response was incredible. We had millions of people reaching out to us, sharing their stories and Mm -hmm. saying, 
Yeah, if maybe you want to like posting that video, we we ended up just miraculously we hit a million subscribers from that video, wow. and we hit number one trending. Which again, it was never something we like were asking mm -hmm. for or wanted. We didn't even think it would be a popular video. Mm -hmm. I was just kind of it was. I don't want to say a cry for help, but I we had built this community, and I thought it was very one sided for so many years. I thought we provided you know entertainment, yeah, and that yeah. was it. And it was the first time I was like, maybe this community can help me. Mm -hmm. And when that took off, we kind of just didn't not ran with it because of the subscribers or the followers, but we ran with it because we saw um, the impact it could have and just started sharing more of our personal story in like a vlog style and hmm. and that's kind of where we kind of find found our niche, I guess. Yeah, because that's your highest viewed video, right? The one where yeah. you shared about your miscarriage. And so yeah. it really resonated, I imagine, with a lot of people. It was something that I, I truly my husband is was the one running kind of the YouTube channel back then and he was very like, Oh, let's film this and push it out. Let's let's show this and push it out and mm -hmm. When that happened, he was the one very reserved. He's like, maybe we shouldn't share this. Maybe it's too vulnerable and too raw. And I was the one who kind of did the role reversal. And I was like, no, it's, I think it's something that I really need. Like, I really feel compelled to, to post it. And I just, I want to read the comments. Like, mm -hmm. I need someone to tell me that this is normal and it's happened to someone else, which I hope nobody ever has to go through that. But, um, and when it took off, I, I remember just sitting there reading comments for hours and just crying and being like, this is truly a powerful platform that mm -hmm. can be used in a way that we had never seen before. And when it comes to parenting and getting pregnant and marriage and everything, we now use it as a multi-way platform. And yes, that video got more views than I, I thought it would get like 100 views, not like millions of views. Um, but it was it was very quickly a story that allowed me to connect with our community and truly talk to them and ask them questions and ask for their advice. And it, it became just kind of our, our way to, to use YouTube that we felt, I guess, powered to. Yeah, yeah, because it's really, I mean, like you said, being so vulnerable, it can be a little bit scary because you just don't know what you're, what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. So you don't know at all. And I think that was the most terrifying part for me in posting that video is I didn't know what I was going to get. And all I wanted was one person to message me and say, you know, girl, I went through this too. It's normal for you to feel this way. It's going to get better. You'll get pregnant again. And when I had hundreds of thousands of women reach out to me and say, we went through this. Thank you. This helped me. And it helped you basically. Um, it just... Yeah, it really touched me. Wow. So it sounds like it did help you in the way that you were hoping. Uh, yes, a lot. And I think that's it kind of that's the one video that made me buy into YouTube. I was up until that moment, I was very reserved again, coming from sports entertainment mm -hmm. where I was taught that you had to be so polished. Um, showing any vulnerability like that was in their eyes weakness. Mm -hmm. And um, that was the one time where I was like, I, I am sold and we have to figure out how we're going to do it on the backside to make sure we protect our family and protect us. Yeah. This is truly kind of the path I want to go down and helping other people by sharing our story. Yeah. So then, uh, what then did you change with your channel or how did things change at that point? Um, it drastically changed. So instead of doing like the trendy stuff, the the younger I would say the younger audience videos so mm -hmm. more like making slime and whatever it was um we switched it to just kind of telling our story and um the kind of I would say style that we've gone with ever since then is more like the reality tv style so we've tried vlogging we tried doing all of you know the different youtube styles and for us it worked best to kind of just film our life personally and look at the footage afterwards and see what story there was to talk about. And we do interviews and we kind of talk about a topic that's really impacted our family or impacted our lifestyle. And then we've shared it and it's been working and it's been something that's been, we've been able to protect our family, but also talk about topics that we otherwise would not have shared with, you know, news outlets, I guess. What do you mean? You said a couple of times, protect your family. What do you mean by that? Um, Kind of like you alluded to earlier, social media is, is a crazy world. There's so many haters and there's so many opinions. And 
we've always said that since we are so vulnerable in sharing our life, mm-hmm. we have to we have to do a very good job um, when the cameras are off at working on a relationship and working through problems. And we have to work through, you know, life events and make sure they're really um, sorted through before we ever share it to the world and let them have their opinions on it. If yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Because if we don't have it sorted through, people's opinions can change ours. And if we aren't really unified outside of that editing, then the world could imp- could could affect our relationship, I guess. Yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah, that's a really good point. So then would you call yourself now like a vlogging channel? Probably. Okay. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. So then what is that process like for you guys? So do you just, do you pick, do you come up with topics and then create them? Or it sounds like you said a little bit ago, you know, we just kind of let the cameras roll and pick stories from there. How, how is the content being curated and created? Yeah. So we try the like traditional vlogging where it's like day in the life, you follow a camera around with you. And we had a really hard time doing that, like quote unquote, protecting our family because We didn't know when we were supposed to be on and when we were off, when we were working or when we weren't. And so we've kind of figured out this new world for us in vlogging where we film events. So like we film the first time our daughter walks and we film, you know, milestones that happen, but as if it's for a personal record and not for YouTube. Mm -hmm. And then we go back days or weeks afterwards and we look through footage and we're like, oh, we should do a video about her walking for the first time. We have her crawling, we have her walking, we have our celebrations. And then we kind of compile that and then story tell along the way. So we'll, we'll look at the footage, we'll sit down and we'll film interviews as if we're reacting in the moment or after the moment about what has happened in our life Mm -hmm. and then compile that and make it a video. And yes, we, we plan out some videos like we're like, Oh, Drew's first Halloween is coming up. How are we going to plan for that? What are we going to film? Are we going to film her costume, her first Christmas, whatever? But then we also make sure we allow for room for things to organically kind of fill in. Yeah, so it sounds like who's... who's, Okay, I have a lot of questions here. So uh, who... Because that's a lot of work to do that. You know, that there's an incredible (laughs) amount of work for that. So I know at the end of each one of your videos, you have like a thank you. And I'm assuming that's your team. Is it like a production team or just... It's 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 quite a few people that you're thanking at the end of the videos. And I'm like, oh, I wonder if that's how many people that's involved in this (laughs) this whole production. Um. Yes and no. So the people that we thank at the end of the video are actually our followers. Oh, okay. At the end of every video, we we go through our followers, comments, people who have liked videos, and we actually do like a a scroll through just thanking people for being part of our community. It was something that we started after the miscarriage video just because I felt so touched by people who are Mm -hmm. actually following our our story and helping along. Um, But yes, it is a lot of work in the sense that we're always filming. Um, but we're filming again for record, not for YouTube, but also for both. Mm-hmm. Um, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And then we do have like, we don't have a production team because we film everything ourselves, but we do have like a team that helps edit mm-hmm. and a team that helps kind of take our vision and put it together after we've filmed all the components. Got so, it. Yes. Yeah. So you do have, you do have help, but you're, you're doing all the filming yourself. Cause it sounds like what you guys do is like, you know, that there's, things coming up like oh okay like this holiday is coming up or oh you know she's learning how to walk or we're gonna have a birthday party so you're gonna you know you're gonna film those yeah. and then is it like oh something's happening like oh let's turn on the camera or do you really kind of always have the cameras rolling um if you were to meet my husband you would understand he always has a camera rolling mm. but that's how he was even before we started on social media or youtube he, his father is the same exact way. There's not a single moment in our lives that's pretty much not on camera or not photographed or something just because they love documenting everything, mm-hmm. which actually makes it perfect for YouTube because yeah. we have the, all the footage in the world. Yeah, yeah, which can take a lot of time to then narrow down and then figure out what you're going to do with it. Uh, yes, which is where kind of the quote unquote team comes in, which makes okay. it a lot um, easier and manageable, especially now having Drew 
we try to prioritize our time a lot. So we've hired an editor who we're obsessed with. She's, um, she's just the perfect person for us in sharing our story and the voice that we want. We feel mm-hmm. like when she edits, it's truly us editing. We did the editing for so many years and just started running out of time. Um, and then we also have someone who helps us kind of compile our thoughts. So she, she writes mm-hmm. out like our quote unquote scripts, even though yeah. nothing scripted. Yeah. That's what I was wondering. I was like, is there somebody helping you with like the storyboard or like coming? Yeah. Because there's, there's a, especially with vlogging and you're gonna have a vlogging channel, you have to have some mm-hmm. stories you're telling or ongoing stories or ongoing, you know, your characters, obviously it's your family, but it, it, in a lot of ways, the best vlogs, they're very kind of like reality TV. I mean, yeah. you know, they're, they, they're not scripted, but they have to be planned. Otherwise, yeah. there's just no story there. So we actually found this girl. She's amazing at what she does, but she actually um, she sees our footage and then she fills it in in between. So mm. she'll tell us like what stuff we're missing and in the interviews, what it is um, that we need to talk about to kind of give that storyline a beginning, middle, and end. That's so helpful. Oh, so one of the one of the things I think is really insightful of you and your husband was that you guys saw YouTube as this platform that was there and it could be a vehicle to share your story. So five years ago was a little bit of an early adopter as a celebrity onto Mm -hmm. this platform. Today, I do feel like I'm seeing more and more celebrities trying to get onto YouTube. What are your thoughts about that idea of kind of leveraging YouTube, I guess, to further your career as a celebrity? I think it's awesome. Mm -hmm. I think um, it's been really an incredible platform for us, our career, our storytelling. Um, Again, I think for celebrities, there's just, there's this massive void of nobody truly knows who they are Mm -hmm. because everybody is edited. Everybody has, you know, a production team with whatever um, outlet it is that's truly forming their story for them. And whether it's actresses or professional athletes, there's this whole other world that they could be sharing on their own. And I think, I think YouTube is, is difficult. I think it's a, it's a time commitment. Yes, <laughs> We're like, oh, I'm going to become a YouTuber. I'm like, oh. Good luck with that. <laughs> um, it's a lot of work. But I think it's a beautiful opportunity to share with the world a story that otherwise wouldn't be out there mm-hmm. and kind of just have another career for yourself. It's, it's really, I don't think there's an end to it like a lot of careers have. So I retired as a gymnast, but I can continue on sharing my story as a retired gymnast through YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's like you're extending your career. Yeah. And so what about monetization? So for you, you know, you're used to appearances or being on shows or like you said, you know, judging different gymnastic contests. At this point that it's, you said you gave that all up, you know, Mm -hmm. both you and your husband and now it's YouTube. So now you've got to make a living off of this. Mm -hmm. How was that switch of going from that to this and navigating this world of YouTube and figure out how to monetize it? Yes. So that is, more so my husband's niche. Mm -hmm. I, I got so used to working in like the marketing world with sports entertainment. Again, I got so used to seeing a product that I was supposed to endorse and I knew how to act around that, how to sell it, how to, you know, do everything that you needed to be Mm -hmm. the right image for that product. So I learned that world, the ins and outs for 10 years. Switching over to YouTube, I wanted again to get a little bit away from being made to sell a product Mm -hmm. and truly gain the trust of our community and say, you know what, this is actually what I like and this is what I use. And I'm not going to give you like the one sheet of what they're telling me to say. I'm going to actually tell you what it's like. And so I, I just kind of converted the marketing that I learned and, and seeing the different opportunities YouTube had to monetize within integration, like within the YouTube videos. And then also the monetization side of, if it's a well enough video and we get views, then the monetization kind of converts as well. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. So it sounds like it's through the AdSense, mm-hmm. but also still, and like what you said you've learned to do for years as a gym, gymnast with sponsorships, is, it's brand sponsorships. Yes. So brand sponsorships are a big one for us, mm-hmm. but 
it works because we we share such a lifestyle brand. We're naturally using so many products within our videos anyways, we're, because we're cooking, we're showing people how we travel and what we use and what we pack. And it's just been this natural integration of like, okay, we use, you know, this toothbrush every single day. And people are asking like, what is it? It's an awesome, awesome opportunity for us to go to that toothbrush company and say, okay, people are asking to buy this. Do you have a code? Mm -hmm. Do you want us to push it a little bit more? And so we've just tried to do stuff very naturally. Again, we take the trust of our community very, very seriously. So if we ever break their trust, we break our career. Mm -hmm. And so we try, we never promote anything that we don't believe in. We try everything before we ever push it and make sure that it's a natural integration, not something that's just for money. Yeah, that's huge. And I think that's, that is where the success of YouTubers and brand partnerships really lie is the true authenticity. It's not just, oh, mm. here's Sean Johnson, you know, Olympic medalist, like, you know, wearing the, this beautiful watch and a picture. Hi, you yeah. know, it's it's so much more authentic to you and what you're actually doing. And like you said, if you lose the trust of your audience, there goes there goes your career. Yeah. Yeah. It's just not worth it. It, it takes a lot of planning mm-hmm. because, again, the world of brand integration and brand sponsorship is tricky because when you're promoting something that you believe in, you have to, you're working with a brand as well who has all their P's and Q's that you mm-hmm. have to follow and trying to convince your audience that it truly is authentic, even though you have a team behind you saying, or the brand's legal team saying, oh, but you have to say this and you have to show it this way. Yeah. It's just like this, it's this huge planning process of what, how can we make this, I don't want to say believable because it's, it's already believable because it's a product we use, Mm -hmm. but how do we get the legal team to let us do it the way that we know our audience is going to approve of? Yeah, that is tricky. I mean, it it is because it's like everybody, each party has what they need, right? You as a YouTube creator, you're it's like you know you're doing it for your audience the brands they're 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 paying money to make sure their product is presented in a certain way Mm -hmm. yeah it's a long process and it's one that we take very seriously that's why we have our team and we try to make sure that everything we put out is something that we're proud of and something Mm -hmm. that we believe in and again we never cross that line into money over you know our followers because our followers are what ends up making our career um so it's it's just a, it's a long process, but it's one that we're we've enjoyed doing. Yeah, definitely. And so, other than um, brand sponsorships and AdSense, are there other ways that you've been able to leverage your YouTube channel uh, in regards to monetization? Um, yes and no. Uh, we've done a lot of like because of Andrew and I's, my husband and I's unique um, career paths. Mm-hmm because I worked in the marketing world and sports entertainment for so long. And then my husband having his MBA and having kind of such an understanding of the analytical side, we worked a lot in kind of, um, consulting monetization. So Mm. we worked with YouTube and Google and all these brands that are now working with influencers and trying to consult them and say, this is the best way to, to, to work with influencers Mm -hmm. and to get that conversion that you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah, that's smart. Working with brands to help them work with influencers, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Very cool. That's awesome. Uh, okay, so we're at the end of the interview, and this is what I call the hot seat round. So basically, yeah. I go through and just list questions that I ask every single person that comes on the show. Love You're it. ready for it? Yeah. All right. What is the favorite video that you have on your channel? Um... Two, the birth of our daughter mm-hmm. and then the miscarriage video. I know it's a painful video, but it's one that I was very proud of just because it it conveyed our emotions and our whole journey very well. Yeah. And that actually goes hand in hand with the next question, which is what is your highest viewed video? Uh, our highest viewed video is miscarriage and birth of our daughter. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good that it aligns. It doesn't always align yeah. for, for people. Um, was there any video that you guys did that you're particularly excited about that just kind of flopped? Um, a lot of them. <laughs> I think that's the tricky thing about YouTube is you never know what's going to be successful and work and what's not. Um, one that flopped, 
I don't know if it like flopped. I think it did pretty well, but we did one. I think I was really excited about it because of the experience. We did the anti-gravity jet mm-hmm. and I did gymnastics on the anti-gravity jet. So we got to go up and like do all of these like dips on a uh, airplane. And I got to like fly inside the airplane and flip and we filmed it. Cool. I think it did okay, yeah. but yeah, I was excited about that one. <laughs> um, what is the biggest opportunity you got as a result of your YouTube channel? Um, we actually got credentialed. I mean, we'll see if it happens again, but we got credentialed as YouTubers to document the Olympics next year. Oh, this year. But, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so, cool. I usually get, it was really a proud moment for me because I get credentialed every four years to be, um, media for, uh-huh. you know, Yahoo or NBC for the Olympics. And the fact that my husband and I got credentialed for our actual channel was pretty cool. Have other channels had that type of distinction? Um, I don't think individual channels have. Mm. No, that's huge. So, yeah, we were that, really, we're really excited. That I paves the way for you know other almost like yeah. YouTube channels to really be seen as actual media outlets. Yes, I love it, and I think it's an awesome you know path and way that YouTube is going, and I hope they continue going that way. Very cool. Uh, what is your superpower that you think has led to your success here on YouTube? Um, my husband. <laughs> uh, my husband is the greatest individual when it comes to pushing me out of my comfort zone. I was so adamant at the beginning that YouTube was not where I was supposed to thrive because I was good at following other people's instructions, mm. whether it was a coach or a brand saying, do this, do that to be successful. And I got very uncomfortable coming to YouTube and actually being me because I, for so long I had brands tell me you had to be someone else for it to work. And so it was a really nerve wracking transition, but my husband is the one who pushed me to do it. And I'm really glad he did. Oh, that's awesome. Um, you guys are really cute. Like watching you guys, you guys have, you guys are a super cute family. Uh, what, oh, if you were to start over with your YouTube channel right now, uh, what would you do differently? Um, just go all in from the beginning. I feel like because YouTube is such a different world, a lot of people have hesitations and they don't jump in full, you know, heartedly right away. I think for us, if we would have dove head, head first and just learned everything at the beginning and had more fun with it, it would have been better, but we're learning. Yeah. Better late than never. Right. Uh, how, how often do you upload now? We upload twice a week, so every Thursday and Sunday. Got it. What is your number one struggle when it comes to your YouTube channel? I think our number one struggle is figuring out what is too much and what's not enough with sharing our personal life. I think as new parents, it's a struggle of wanting to protect our daughter, but also open her up to a world that we are very passionate about. Um, And everyone does it differently. So we, we don't know, again, what's what's too much and what's not enough. Yeah, that, that is, that, that can be something that, I mean, it sounds like, I mean, obviously you and your husband's a really good relationship and being united in what you guys want to do, what you don't want to do and having that yeah. understanding. And a lot of times we butt heads on that, which makes the creative process difficult, but it makes it fun. And yeah, so that's the challenge. What would you tell somebody who wants to get started with a YouTube channel today? Uh, do it. Absolutely. It's a learning process. You're not going to perfect it from the first video and it just takes time to learn, but it's super fun. It's an awesome community and you can do whatever you want, which is really fun. It is really cool. Yeah. It's yeah. And and, and I'm sure for you being a gymnast (laughs) in the public eye, then translating that into celebrity and everything you did, you're constantly being told what to do and how to do it. Yes. And this is a level of freedom that I imagine is is new. Like I said, it sounds like it's kind of you're getting used to this idea of freedom. But mm-hmm. like you said, it's it's an incredible thing. It yes, I it's probably dangerous because, you know, if I ever have to leave YouTube for whatever reason, I'm going to have a really hard time getting, you know, going back to the old world because having the freedom that YouTube allows you to have is unlike any job in the entire world. You can truly, you don't have to deal with record labels and coaches and employers and 
you you make your own career and your own lifestyle, which has been a blessing. But I just hope it never ends. <laughs> yeah, and I think a lot of people get into YouTube for that freedom. You know, a lot of people like they're in a job and they're like, oh, I'm so over it. Or, you know, they're a mom at home and like, I just want to have my own thing. Or I just, I you know, I don't like this job. And it's truly, I think from my experience of working with YouTubers and interviewing, it's really boils down to that freedom to Mm -hmm. really do. But there's also this fine line of having freedom, but also serving your, your audience. Cause in a way there you're, you're free, but you can't really do everything you want to do because it really boils down to making your audience happy. So how is that switch? Yeah. So I, I was, that was an asterisk I was going to put in there too, is the freedom. You have the freedom of restriction from, you know, whatever, but you also, it is a career. It's a commitment and you, whatever storyline, I had someone explain it to me early on as you are a TV show. And if someone's watching the bachelor or the bachelorette and they expect to see the bachelor or bachelorette every Monday at some, whatever time it is, and this is what they're coming to see. If you don't give it to them that week, they're going to say, Oh, I can't, you know, rely on you. And I can't rely on this and I'm over it and I'm going to move on. And so it, it's very restrictive that way where you are a TV channel and there's a commitment to it and it's a job, but it's fun because it's your own story and your own creation. Yeah, I think that is a good way of, of looking at it. And it, you almost have to look at it like that too and take it as seriously as a TV show that has to upload at a certain time every single week and you have storylines because otherwise people are going to people are gonna lose interest. There's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of really good content there on YouTube. Yeah. Absolutely. And last question, what is your unfair advantage on YouTube? So everybody has unfair advantages. What are yours? Uh, I think the unfair advantage at the beginning, I mean, it didn't convert right away, but having my career as a gymnast definitely helped just get the collabs and have the backing of trust that we had so early on. I think it takes people a long time to find that. Mm-hmm. Some more than others, some less than others. Um, but that is definitely my unfair advantage. Yeah, definitely. All right, Sean, thank you so much for being on the podcast for our listeners and viewers who maybe don't know who you are and they don't know uh, about your channel. Where can they find you? Um, they can find me on all platforms as Sean Johnson and then on our um YouTube channel is the East Bam. So awesome. All right. Well, if you enjoy this, let us know in the comments below. Uh, like the video and let us know like what your thoughts are on Sean's journey as a celebrity turned YouTuber and your biggest takeaways from the interview. Bye. Bye, Sean. Bye.